Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from whatever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, the bipartisan dialogue is supposed to start today between the uh, committee selected by Azimio La Umoja and the Kenya Kwanza side. And uh, before the kick-off of that dialogue, Azimio came out from Kanondo Musioka's command center with a press statement. If you listen to them, on what they are racing out, then we will conclude and say that then there is no reason for Azmi Umoja to continue engaging in the bipartisan dialogue. I have been reading comments very carefully during that uh, press when it was live, and even I've gone further to read more in the comment section. Those people who are supporting the Azmi Umoja are asking Raila Odinga to stop the issue of bipartisan dialogue and resume the mass action. There is something that is racing out. Number one, the leadership of Kenya Kwanza went further through the National Assembly Majority Leader Kimani Chungwa to set up a committee that is going to be in charge of bipartisan dialogue without consulting the minority side. So the discussion was going on in the chamber on how they are going to select the committee. That means the Kenya Kwanza want even to select those who are going to be chairing the, the, to, to be, to be co-chair in that committee without the knowledge of the Azimiola Umoja. Not even involving even the minority leader or Pio and I. And this is what Kalonzo Musoka is saying about that. The motion is in disguise as product of bipartisanship uh, bipart when, in fact, the leadership of Azimio La Umoja in the parliament was neither aware nor consulted over. So Kimani Chungwa come with a motion, then we tangula, allow people to go on with the motion as a speaker, and they won't go further and select those who are going to be part of the committee. The question is, what about the people that Raila had already selected from Azimio, that was an argument from Azimio, and the ones who had come out with? Why change the setting of that talk? The other question someone will ask himself, the reason why we are in this dialogue is because Azimio were demonstrating and they had their own issues while they were demonstrating. Number one to that issue was cost of living, electricity, school fees, and uh, fuel. Number two, it was about opening the server. Then number three, the constituting of new IBC commissioners, seven of them. As the mayor wanted to be included in the selection of the new commissioners. But then when William Ruto came out to issue the statement, because according to Azimio, William Ruto sent his emissaries to reach out to the Azimio side. And in their discussion, they laid out key issues, issues, issues of discussion if they have to go into a bipartisan dialogue. And what I have mentioned is all what they discussed. Cost of living should be on the table. Electricity tariff should be on the table. The issue of fuel price should be on the table. The cost of living in terms of UNGA was supposed to be on the table. Then forensic audit of the IBC servers was on the discussion and the commissioners. But when Ruto came out, the only issue he emphasized on was the constituting of the new IBC commissioners. The other issues, he was quiet about it. Azimio again is coming out to raise out that issue. So for them, in as much they are still for the dialogue, they don't believe in the uh, William Ruto manner in which he is approaching this kind of dialogue. They have delayed to form their committee. They have delayed to name the chair in that committee, the co-chair. Azimio has already named their leadership side. But why is Ruto delaying up to now? That's the question. So, in as much they are going to this dialogue, I don't see Azmio having much of hope in that dialogue. Again, William Samuel Ruto is not showing goodwill in the dialogue. 
And if really this is the situation now, the question is, why is Azmio going to sit in that dialogue? Everyone is angry. No one wants Azmio to go in the dialogue. Instead, they want to go to mass action. And that's why Raila, uh, through Kalunga Musyoka, he has announced that immediately after Ramadan, they are going to resume mass action. That means Ramadan might be ending on 21st or 22nd there. That means from 23 going forward, after uh, the celebration uh, to end the Ramadan, people will resume mass action. Now, I want to leave you here with a speech from Kalonzo Musyoka in the press. Listen to the end, then drop your comment. But again, please just remember to subscribe if you are not yet subscribed. Thank you. See you in our next video. But watch this video. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, uh, this is the leadership of Zemir Laomoja, One Kenya Coalition Party, together with the delegates to the proposed bipartisan discussions that are uh, scheduled to be beginning shortly. So uh, we have a statement which is going to be read by Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Musioka on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, or is it up to late this afternoon, early uh, this afternoon, the leadership of the Azmeo La Moja One Kenya Coalition Party, including those from the Houses of Parliament, met with our delegates to the Envisage National Dialogue to review developments on the envisaged talks. Any reasonable observer of the happenings in the last few weeks will agree with us that Kenya Kwanzaa has no intention whatsoever of holding any dialogue at all, let alone one that is honest, transparent, and bipartisan. They have exhibited absolute bad faith from the beginning, and we will highlight the same as follows. Number one, when Honorable Ruto invited, invited us for talks, he did not in his speech capture the entire framework for talks as had been agreed upon with the emissaries he sent to us. This includes leaving out key issues on the cost of living and electoral justice which are of utmost importance to us and the people of Kenya. Number two, the delay in naming his team is another sign of a lack of seriousness that has been made worse by the inclusion of members of the Azimio coalition in his team when the whole country knows that respect for multi-party dem democracy is one of the key issues we have put on the table. Number three, to date, Kenya Kwanzaa has failed to name the leadership of his team as a way of stonewalling. Number four, last evening, we learned of a motion drafted by Kenya Kwanzaa leadership allegedly aiming, aimed at setting up a joint select committee in parliament. The motion is in absolute bad faith for the following reasons. A. We have insisted on an extra-parliamentary process in view of the st uh, strictures of debate in parliament. We will therefore not participate in any such parliamentary process. B. The motion is disguised as a product of bipartisanship when in fact the leadership of Azimio and Parliament were neither aware nor consulted in its drafting. C. The motion proposed to name members of the minority party to the so-called select committee without any reference to the minority leadership in violation of the standing orders of both houses. And D. The motion purports to set the terms of reference and scope of the discussions without any reference to us. We continue to insist that the dialogue must be about all the four issues, namely the cost of UNGA, fuel and electricity, forensic audit of the servers, bipartisan reconstitution of the IEBC, and respect for multi-party democracy. Kenya Kwanzaa cannot dictate to us what we cannot bring to the table. Um, 
So given the foregoing, we as the leadership of a coalition have resolved as follows. Number one, we remain committed to an extra-parliamentary dialogue that is honest, transparent, meaningful, and bipartisan in conception and execution. Our members of parliament in both houses shall not be party to any other process, and particularly not the one proposed in the motion by Kenya Kwanzaa. Number two, we have instructed the chairperson of our team, uh, Senior Counsel Otendo Molo, to formally invite the Kenya Kwanzaa team for a meeting to set the ground rules for the talks. Number three, our issues remain what we said before, and they are reduction in cost of unga, fuel, electricity, and school fees, opening and audit of IBC servers, bipartisan reform and reconstitution of IBC, reinstatement of the four IBC commissioners, and end to the buying of MPs, which threatens multi-party democracy. And before we reiterate the call that the regime must immediately take up the hospital bills of all Kenyans who sustained injury, injuries as a result of police brutality during the recent protests and demonstrations and pay reparations for those who lost their property and their lives. Number five, that the coalition shall resume its weekly protests at the end of Ramadan and further communication in this regard will follow. I thank you. Good. Sawa. So, maswali. Maswali tafadhali kama kuna swali. Pengine baada ya iftar.